Ed Sheeran fans surprised as Hollywood star performs with band. Hollywood star Chris Hemsworth has surprised Ed Sheeran fans at a concert in Romania by joining the singer's band on stage to play the drums. The Thor star, 41 years old, teamed up with the musician as part of a documentary series examining the cognitive health benefits of learning an instrument. He accompanied Sheeran who was performing his track Thinking Out Loud to around 60,000 fans at the National Arena in Bucharest on Saturday. Afterwards, he posted a video on Instagram with the Australian actor to explain it was part of a show being filmed about the limits of the human body. In the series Limitless with Chris Hemsworth, he takes on various challenges to explore issues people across the world face daily, including pain, fear, cognitive impairment and social connection. Sharon added a message to accompany the video, complimenting the actor, he was wonderful. I think he deserves a permanent spot in the band. Fans' reaction on Instagram was also positive, it was insane, thank you so much for the surprise. Another user posted, imagine you're at an sick Ed Sheeran concert having the time of your life and then you find out Thor has been playing the drums the whole time. The first series from National Geographic saw Hemsworth push the limits of his body and mind, including exploring the impact of fasting and how to manage stress. His show Limitless with Chris Hemsworth will launch in 2025. Sir Ben Ainsley has Rolex robbed at knife point in Barcelona. British former Olympic yachtsman Sir Ben Ainsley has been robbed of his Rolex watch at knife point in Barcelona. The 47-year-old, who is leading the UK's Ineos Britannia team in the America's Cup, was mugged by a gang while leaving a restaurant on Saturday night, local media reported. The watch was said to be valued at around $22,257. Sir Ben reported the theft to police in Barcelona on Monday. He said, Barcelona is a fantastic host city for the America's Cup, and the team has felt welcomed and is enjoying our stay in this vibrant city. Like in all big cities, you can be affected by opportunistic crime and my situation is no different. This matter is now with the local authorities. Barcelona has seen a spate of luxury watch thefts and the city has a police team specializing in the theft of high-value watches. Sir Ben is the most successful sailor in Olympic history. He has won medals at five consecutive Olympics from 1996 onwards, including gold at four consecutive games held between 2000 and 2012. Rare Bronze Age Jar Smashed by 5-Year-Old Boy in Museum in Israel A 5-year-old boy has accidentally broken an ancient urn dating to the late Bronze Age at a museum in Israel. The artifact was on display at the Hecht Museum at the University of Haifa when the damage happened on Friday. But the reaction from the museum's director, Dr. Inbul Rivlin, might take some people by surprise. Directly addressing the boy and his mother, she invited them to return for a guided tour adding, don't be afraid, we have no claim against you. The pair are said to have been scared after the jar was damaged near the entrance to the museum and quickly left. The archaeological find was discovered during excavations in Samaria, in central Israel, and has been in the museum for 35 years. It is dated to between 1130 and 1500 BC. The museum described the jar as rare and an impressive find as most others of that period were found broken or incomplete. It added in a statement, it predates the days of David and King Solomon, is typical of the Canaan region and was intended for storing and transporting local consumption, mainly wine and olive oil. Dr. Rivlin explained that the jar was not behind a display case because of the vision of the museum's founder, Dr. Reuven Hecht. His intention was to make archaeological items as accessible as possible to visitors. The museum says artifacts rarely suffer damage but this jar will be repaired and placed back on display. 
Dr. Rivlin also issued a note of caution to parents suggesting they may need to give their children guidance before their visit, so exhibits are not touched unless it is explicitly stated that is allowed. The museum, which is free to enter and within the grounds of the University of Haifa, has numerous archaeological exhibits from the Chalcolithic to Byzantine periods. Salvador Dali prints found tucked away in London Garage after 50 years. A treasure trove of prints signed by Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali which had been tucked away and forgotten for 50 years have been found in a garage. The lithographs cost $660 when they were bought in the 1970s and could now fetch around $6,600 when they are put up for auction. The hall, which also includes five lithographs by French painter, engraver, illustrator and sculptor Theo Tobias, was discovered at a home in Berkeley Square, Mayfair, London, during a clear-out. Antiques expert Chris Kirkham, who is associate director of London's Hanson's Richmond Auction House, called the find amazing and surreal. He said, I think the fact these have laid dormant so long has ensured the colors are fresh and each being signed by Dolly gives people a wonderful opportunity to own something the great man has touched. It was an amazing find. During the visit the vendor took me to his garage and, lo and behold, out came this treasure trove of surrealist lithographs all 15 of them. They'd been tucked away and forgotten about for around 50 years. It felt quite surreal. You never know what you're going to uncover on a routine home visit. The buyer paid a modest $660 for the lithographs, all unframed, in a closing down sale at a central London gallery in the 1970s. He purchased them with a view to framing them for his home in Berkeley Square but never got round to it. So the prints ended up in his garage. He's looking to retire and move abroad, so now his lithographs will finally see the light of day at auction. Hansen said the Dolly lithographs have a guide price of $396 to $660 each, while the Tobias works are at $132 to $396 each. They will go under the hammer at Hansen's Richmond on September 30th. He was a Catalonian surrealist who had associations with avant-garde movements, particularly surrealism. Born in May 1904, he became one of the most prolific artists of the 20th century. Hansen's Richmond Auction House says on its website how he was renowned for his technical skill and bizarre images. He was influenced by Pablo Picasso, Joan Moreau, and Sigmund Freud. His work covered paintings, sculpture, film, graphic art, animation, fashion, and photography. Dolly died in Spain in January 1989 at the age of 84. <coughs> 83 elephants among hundreds of wild animals set to be culled. Some 83 elephants and 30 hippos are set to be killed as part of a cull of more than 700 wild animals in Namibia and the meat then distributed to people struggling to feed themselves. The Southwest African country's environment ministry said the measure is being taken because of a severe drought. The cull will take place in parks and communal areas where authorities believe animal numbers exceed available grazing land and water supplies. Southern Africa is facing its worst drought in decades, with Namibia having exhausted 84% of its food reserves last month, according to the United Nations. Nearly half of Namibia's population is expected to experience high levels of food insecurity in the coming months. With such a severe drought, human-wildlife conflicts are expected to increase if the authorities do not intervene, the country's environment ministry said. To this effect, 83 elephants from identified conflict areas will be culled, and meat will be allocated to the drought relief program, it added. Alongside the elephants and hippos, Namibia also plans to cull 60 buffalo, 50 impala, 100 blue wildebeest, 300 zebra, and 100 eland. The government has contracted professional hunters who have already killed 157 animals, yielding more than 56,800 kilos of meat. 
This exercise is necessary and is in line with our constitutional mandate where our natural resources are used for the benefit of Namibian citizens, the Environment Ministry said. More than 200,000 elephants are estimated to live in a conservation area spread over five southern African countries Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, Angola and Namibia making the region home to one of the largest elephant populations worldwide. What is the EE virus? How deadly is it and why is it closing parks in the US? A man has died and public parks are being closed after cases of a deadly mosquito-borne virus in two U.S. states. The man died in New Hampshire after being hospitalized due to severe central nervous system disease caused by Eastern Equine Encephalitis e, state authorities said. A man in his 80s has also caught the virus in Massachusetts this week, prompting the rollout of insecticide sprays and public parks being closed from dusk until dawn, the state public health department said. There have been five cases of the virus this year, seven reported last year, and 38 before the coronavirus pandemic in 2019. Eastern equine encephalitis is spread by infected mosquitoes often found in freshwater hardwood swamps. It was first detected in horses in Massachusetts in the 1800s. Although human-to-human -human transmission is extremely uncommon, the virus is deadly a third of those who contract it will die, usually around 10 days after being bitten. Symptoms, which usually develop between 4 and 10 days after becoming infected, include fever, body aches, vomiting and diarrhea, extreme tiredness, brain inflammation. The U.S. Public Health Body, the Centers for Disease Prevention and Control CDC, warns that those who do recover can suffer serious long-term neurological damage. This includes intellectual impairment, personality disorders, seizures, paralysis, and cranial nerve dysfunction. Cases are very rare with only a few logged in the U.S. each year. Most of them occur in eastern or Gulf Coast states during peak mosquito season in August and September. As such, no vaccine has been developed, and symptoms are treated with antiviral drugs, but there is no cure. New Hampshire state epidemiologist Dr. Benjamin Chan said the current risk will only cease when a hard frost kills the carrier mosquitoes. Humans and horses are considered dead-end hosts, so do not pass on the disease once infected. Records show one case of EE being transmitted from one organ donor to three recipients. The death in New Hampshire is the first recorded this year. Both New Hampshire and Massachusetts are taking measures to help prevent people from getting infected. The CDC advises the following to avoid getting bitten, use bug spray with DEET or picaridin when out SID, dress in loose-fitting clothes that cover the arms and legs, empty standing water receptacles including dog bowls, flower pots, bird baths, and children's toys.